Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We just love and appreciate you guys. Welcome, welcome to our online worship experience and broadcast. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here with us today, but we do believe that there will be something that'll be shared that'll be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just wanna say welcome to everybody. We thank God for all of our Spirit of Fire family. Spirit of Fire Nation, stand up strong, stand up strong. Man, I'm so ready to, to release what's in my heart right now. Boy, I feel like I'm about to burst. Um, God is doing something tremendous in the lives of people. And I feel this word burning in me to release it today. And so we just want to say to all of our first timers, we thank you for showing up. Anybody, this is your first time. Don't change that dial. Don't you don't log on to something else. Don't don't go to another site right now. Right now, if God locked you in here, stay here, stay here, stay with us, stay with us. I believe this is going to be an answer to some things that you all have been praying for, that people out there have been crying out to God about. And I want to just share. And this is going to be an encouraging word. It's going to be part prophetic, encouragement, teaching, instruction, inspiration, all of that. Um, I'm, I'm just so ready um, to minister this thing to you today. And so, listen, if this is your first time, we want to acknowledge you. We want to just let you know how much we appreciate you showing up here today. So, listen, just log in real quick. Just let us know where you're logging in from, um, no matter what state that you're in, city that you're in, log in, country that you're even in. We want to hear from you today. And so we want to go ahead and, and jump into this. We know that you can be on many other platforms today. And so we value your time. Uh, we value your, your attention. And I believe God wants to deposit something strong in your heart today that's going to feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. We here at Spirit of Fire, our motto is changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. And so... Listen, that means change from the inside out. Changes in how we think, changes in our decision-making processes. Listen, to get something new, you gotta do something new. And so insanity is to do the same thing and expect different results, but we're expecting new results, fresh results, good results, great results for your life. God declares that in a prearranged path, he has a prearranged path for your life. And in that path is the good life. And so we wanna help you and help you accomplish and to achieve. I'm just sensing the presence and the power of God here today. For those that may not be as, as acquainted uh, with certain things, maybe this is your first time, even you just kind of figuring things out. You're trying to, you, you're really trying to just seek God. You want to see what he's about. I'm telling you, you showed up to the right place today. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer so we can lock in and get ready. Listen, share this real quick. Everybody share this. Share this, share this on your platforms. Let people know, tune in, invite somebody. Spirit of fire folk, come on now. Invite people to come to church. Invite them to come into this experience. Invite them to come hear a word from God for their lives. Come on, amen. Listen, man, I'm telling you. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and we're gonna jump into this. Let's go ahead and turn. It's going to come on up a little bit with the music and the worship. We're thanking God. I'm, why, why are you there? I just want you to get into the presence of God. The worship. We're going to worship God real quick. As we go before his gates with thanksgiving, we enter into his courts with praise. We're going to bless and magnify his holy name today. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father, for your presence. Your power is present to heal, set free, deliver, and to make whole. Whatever is wrong, make it right. Whatever is rough, make it smooth. Whatever is crooked, make it straight right now. And Father, I intercede and supplicate on behalf of the people who are listening today under the sound of my voice. I thank you that it is well with them. I pray for their protection. I pray for their peace. I pray for their wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking today. I pray right now for your healing power to manifest that your gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, will manifest as the Holy Spirit will to now bring edification, exhortation, and comfort, to transform, to change, to renew, to set free, and to deliver. Whatever is crooked, make it straight. Whatever is rough, make it smooth. 
Father, whatever is broken, make it whole right now. We thank you for your healing power to heal emotions, to heal sickness and disease from mental illnesses to physical illnesses. Father, we thank you that you saved the sin sick soul. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that in and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you for that. We also thank you that revelation knowledge will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word. And we approach your holy written word reverently. And so, Father, I pray that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened today. Transform and change. I even pray for the spirit of faith, the gift of faith, the gift of faith to be in operation and demonstration to sow into the hearts of people. I sow this word of encouragement. I sow this word of strength. I sow this word of enlightenment. And I thank you that your people are set free and made whole. For those that have been struggling in their faith, I pray for an, a quickening, a great awakening, and a stirring up this day. That they know, they know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are with them, you're for them. That if you be for them, who can be against them? So we thank you. Yeah, we take authority over every attack of the devil. I declare and decree over the people of God. Yeah, that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that tries to infiltrate and touch their bodies dies instantly. Yeah, Father, we thank you. Corona dies instantly in our midst. Every sickness and disease dies instantly in our midst. We thank you, Father, right now that blood glucose levels are normalized and stabilized. We thank you right now that hearts are beating with the rhythm of life, producing and pumping pure blood throughout our bodies, promoting life and health. I declare that oxygen levels are normalized, Father, that lungs are healed, kidneys are healed, and right now made whole. New body parts are given out. New livers, Father, right now in Jesus' name. New heart valves. Everything that is needed is restored right now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace, shalom, wholeness, nothing missing, broken or lacking. I rebuke the spirit of fear that is attacking the minds of people. I come against depression right now in Jesus' name. And I declare and decree that the joy of the Lord is their strength, that you're the strength of their lives, the peace of God, the wholeness of God, the shalom of God rules in our hearts, and we refuse to worry about anything. Yeah, we keep our hearts. We refuse to allow our hearts to be troubled. We refuse to walk in fear, for you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have discipline and self-control. Father, I pray for a, a strong sense of discipline and excellence to hit your people and focus, refocusing, reshifting, realignment like never before. That, Father, we finish strong and we finish right. We give you glory for it now. We thank you that every limitation has been shattered through the shed blood of Jesus. I declare it and decree it in the name of Jesus, so it is so. Your word declares we shall decree things and they shall be established for we are kings and priests unto our God and the light of your favor shines upon our ways. I command and I declare that people are coming off of medications right now. I declare and decree supernatural weight loss. I declare and decree right now that respiratory systems are healed and made whole. Father, we thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, those that have been weary, I speak the word of life to you right now. Quicken them, Father. Quicken their mortal bodies and make them alive. I speak the nerve damage. I command it to be healed in Jesus' name. Now receive, 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 receive back pain being healed. Slip disc being healed. Yeah, spinal, spinal, spinal. Oh, man, spinal cord. Ah, oh. is it spinal and bifida? Yeah. That's what I heard, spinal and bifida being healed. The healing power of God is manifesting. I sense the strong presence of the Lord. I sense this authority rising up in me to declare and to decree over the people. And Satan, you have no lot of place in their life. In Jesus' name, we plead the bloodline upon every member, partner, and supporter of this work right now. In the name of Jesus, we dispatch the angels of God to go to the north, the south, the east, and the west to execute and to administer the prayers of the righteous right now. Now, Father, we just thank you for it. In the name that's above every name. 
in the name that's above every name, in the name that's above cancer. Yeah, in the name that's above cancer. Cervical cancer is healed. Prostate cancers are healed. Every form of cancer is healed. Lymph nodes are healed right now. We thank you, Father. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Thyroid conditions are healed. Healed now. Healed now. I speak joy. I speak joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable. I declare that you're going to laugh again. I declare that you're going to have fun in life again. I declare in the name of Jesus that all is well with you. I sense the presence of God. The power of God is present to heal. God's saying, I'm jolting your faith. I'm boosting your faith this day. And all things work, yeah, in Jesus' name. I rebuke alcoholism right now. I command the taste of the alcohol to come out of your mouth now. In Jesus' name. Ye kumbre shete kana. Ye dobrombre. Bre, wicked devices will no longer have the same effect on you. Yeah. You will go to log into that porn site and nothing will even affect you. It'll shut down in Jesus' name. I rebuke right now the spirit of lust right now. I command, ooh, the spirit of apprehension. Apprehension is fear-based. Yeah, you haven't been moving forward in certain things. God is coming against that fear now and you're going to break through. Step out into that fear has been the wall. It's been that wall. That's on the, on the other side of that fear is your inheritance. Everything you've been believing for, if you just push through the fear and to make it happen, God says, I'm going to open up all kinds of doors for you. Go ahead and get ready. This is your day. This is your receiving day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Shut down. Heroin addictions. Heroin addiction. The power of God can deliver you from drugs. It can deliver you from any addiction from any and every addiction now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Father, thank you for this word today that you've given me. Let it come forth with might and power, with clarity, sharpness, and precision like a sniper, hitting everything that it needs to hit. And so, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. I declare that Spirit of Fire Fellowship is a thriving, growing, and prospering work. I declare right now that every part, Michael May Ministries, yeah, Father, the Mac, we thank you right now, Project Stallion, everything you call us to do, every program, every building, every work shall be accomplished in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, we pray, praise, and give thanks. Amen and amen. Hey, y'all, I'm telling you. Whoo, whoo, glory to God. Now begin to give them praise. Begin to give them praise where you are right now. Come on, lift up your hands wherever you are. Begin to give them praise. Begin to give them thanks right now. Wherever you are. Yeah, wherever you are. Wherever you are right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We magnify you. We adore you. We glorify you. Glory to your holy name. All is well with your people. All is well. All is well. All is well. All is well. Hallelujah. 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 No, focus on him. Some of y'all need to stop what you're doing. Wherever those distracting things, you need to focus on the Lord right now. Set aside this time. Set aside this time to worship him. Set aside this time to focus in on him. Set aside. Cut the other things off, the other distractions. Cut it off now. You need to lock in right now. You need to lock in and listen intently to what thus saith the Lord. What thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, Lord. Whew. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Ha. Well, y'all, if you have your Bibles, 
I want you to turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1. I want you to turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 through 5. I got a word for you today. Amen. You know, there's some things you just know when you hear things, it's like, man, it's God. I had a good conversation this morning. And in that, I just felt this thing rise up in me. It came up in me so strong. I said, I got to release this. I got to release this to the people today. And here in Jeremiah 4 and 5, before I give you the title, I'm going to go ahead and share this with you. Jeremiah 4 and 5 says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly. I want you to underline that word formed. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. The word of the Lord came and said unto me, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified. I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. God is speaking to his prophet, his servant, Jeremiah. Jeremiah had an identity issue. He began later on to talk about, I can't speak because I'm a child. But God is establishing something with Jeremiah, and he's establishing it with us this day. And I'm just telling you, with everything that's been going on, everything that's been happening, everything that's been um, transpiring in your life, God is saying this, the word of the Lord to you today is this, and this is the title of my message. I was built for this. I was built for this. I'm telling you like never before, there are people who are coming up against certain things in their life that Satan is trying to stop you. He's trying to stop you from manifesting who you are. He's trying to get you off course with a tax to your mind, a tax to your money, a tax to your marriage, a tax to your body, a tax to everything around you. And watch this. And Satan is saying this to some people. If I can't get to you, I'll try to get to those around you. And what he does is this. He tries to attack your heart and how he attacks your heart is by attacking what's dear to your heart. And he's trying to wear you down. But the word of the Lord here today is this. You were built for this. And you're going to make it through this thing. And you're going to overcome whatever it is you've been going through. You're going to overcome this thing. And you're going to come out without the smell of smoke on you. You're going to come out of it brighter than you ever seen before. Stronger than you ever been before. Pressure does one of two things. It can burst pipes, but it can also create diamonds with coal. And sometimes depending on what you do with the pressure will determine your outcome. Are you going to cave in or are you going to press through this thing? And God is saying this, I've already equipped you. He told Jeremiah before, watch this, the word of the Lord came says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. But watch this. He says, I formed you for something. You were created with purpose in mind. God is the most purposeful being there is. And when he created you, he wired you with everything that you need. To form means to squeeze into shape. It means to mold into form. It's just like a pot of wood on, when, when in a pot. Have you ever seen done pottery? And you see you're on there spinning, the spindle. And that potter, whatever that potter shapes and forms that clay to be, that's the design of it. And God says this. When I created you, I created you with purpose in mind, but I also created things in you and wired you for what you are going to go through in your path for your life. So whenever scripture also says this, he says, God will not allow any temptation to come to you that you don't have a way of escape out of it. So the mere fact that you even dealing with the thing has already shown you that you were built to overcome it that you are already designed to overcome it. You are already designed to come out. You are already squeezed, molded, shaped, and formed, and now to handle your assignment for your life. And what Satan will try to do, he will try to disrupt that purpose by getting you off focus, by bringing pain in your life. But if you turn that pain into your workout material, 
Just like when you go into the gym and you add resistance to the weight, that resistance causes you to build up. It causes you to bulk up. It causes your muscles to be defined. If you don't listen, if you overload yourself, that weight could hurt you if you don't do it properly. But God is saying this, when stuff comes to you, you cannot allow that thing to stop you in your tracks. You need to open up your mouth and declare and decree, wait a minute, I was built for this. Listen, ain't nothing I'm going through that I can't handle right now. I'm anointed to be a husband. I'm anointed to be a father. I'm anointed to be a leader. I'm anointed to be this community leader. I'm anointed to be this worker, this servant. I'm anointed to be a man of God. And whatever God created me to do, he has already wired me. He has already equipped me. He has already anointed me to get the job done. God has already rubbed his super on your natural for you to live a supernatural and an exceptional life. You were built for this. And you need to begin to type that now. Type it right now. I was built for this. I was built to overcome. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn it and show it to be in the wrong. And Satan will no longer hold me down. I won't hold me down. By the mistakes of the past, God is projecting you into your future. And the spirit of the Lord, the wind of the spirit is coming into you now to begin to motivate you. And God is saying, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I was built for this. I was built to lead a generation. I was built for this. I was built to be a husband of my wife. I was built to be the father of three wonderful children. It don't matter what they've been through, what they're going through. I'm already graced with the wisdom of God to give them wisdom, guidance, and understanding. I'm already equipped to pray over them and to cover them and to protect them and to keep them and to guide them, to lead them where they need to go. I ain't worrying about it. I ain't fretting it. I'm bringing it and say, come on, head on. Listen, I'm designed for this thing. I was built for strength. I was built for adversity. I was built for speed. I was built for this anointing. No, I'm telling you, man, I'm stirred up right now, doggone it. The enemy will no longer have anybody in my spiritual jurisdiction. That means any member, partner, or supporter of this work, God has God called you and graced me to oversee you, grace my wife to oversee you, and we got this anointing for your life. We were built for this. Glory to God. We were built to pull you out of that muck and that mire. We were built to speak life into you. We were built to speak over your family. We were built. You were built for this. He said, man, what got into you? I'm listening. I'm fed up with the enemy. There's too much you got to get done. And God is saying, you need to come out of your pity party. You need to no longer stop sitting down, wallowing in the dark, in your apartment, in your house, stuck in the corner with that bottle in your hand. He said, put that stuff away from you. He says, everything naturally you've been dependent upon that has been usurping my place in your life, I'm removing all of it so that you can only see me. And the Bible says, when King Uzziah died in Isaiah, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Whatever has been blocking your view of God is being removed out of your life this day. So that now it is between you and God now, and you will have to rise up and begin to declare and to decree who you are in Christ. Glory to God. Okay, see, <laughs> see, I'm built for this. I'm built for this. I'm built for this. I've been around folk, and sometimes I can see Satan attacking their minds. I can see him coming against people and they ready to quit and they ready to give up. And I'm like, how dare you? I was talking to someone yesterday and they were sharing with me what was going on in them, in their bodies. And I, I could hear the fear, the doubt and unbelief. And I said, you know, God can be, he can do such and such. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, I know. I said, uh, this is what you need to do. You need to speak life. You have authority. Jesus has already done this thing for you. Jesus died and took your sickness on his body. And by his stripes, you were healed. Now you need to declare you were healed. Jesus already did it. Jesus already seated at the right hand of God, the father. The work is already finished. It's already done. Now you as a believer need to rise up in your authority and begin to declare and to decree enough is enough. My life is redeemed from destruction. Whatever's going on wrong in you, no, you have to align yourself. You have to change. You have to do this. Stop saying you can't do it because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. 
This goes back to Jeremiah chapter one, verse six. Now I'm going to come back and share some other things. Then Jeremiah said it like this. Oh, Lord, behold, I cannot speak. This God coming up to him. He told him, listen, I already knew you. I formed you. I created you. Listen, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Now, let me go back here real quick. To sanctify means to appoint. To sanctify means to dedicate, consecrate, to proclaim. God was telling him, I formed you. I shaped you. I molded you. I ordained you. I appointed you. That word ordained means appointed or to bestow. I bestowed you this office of a prophet to the nations. I knew you before you even came and were conceived in the belly of your mama. I knew you. That means you were already with me in eternity. And I placed you in your mother's womb in time so that you could be born at this specific time, in this specific dispensation, in this specific generation to now do what it is I called and created you to do. You were supposed to be born now. You were supposed to be born in this generation. You were supposed to be born in the earth for this moment. moment. And God said, I already knew. But watch this. The first thing he comes back to do he comes back to God with is expressing his limitations. I can't speak for I'm a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then he says this, don't be afraid of their faces, for I'm with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. He says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pour down. Wait a minute. Hold on. God says, I set you. I placed you. Don't you ever fear losing a position that God set you in. He set you in that position. He's the one that ordained you to be there. He's the one. And nobody can take your place if you don't allow them to. God set you there. God set you in motion. And don't you abdicate your role. Don't you give it up. Don't you turn it over. God says, you were the one that I built for this. You were the one that I formed for this. And how dare you put aside what I put in you because people need what you got. I formed you. And don't you allow self-doubt and lack of confidence. He says, don't cast away your confidence because it has great recompense of reward. God is saying, I'm boosting your confidence this day. And this time, I sense it like this. God said, I'm snatching you out of that thing. I am snatching you out by my spirit. I'm snatching you out by my mouthpiece and you coming out this thing now in Jesus name. Don't you ever go back into that dirt again. Don't you ever go back wallowing in that dark place for the light is coming and shining upon you and you are gonna see your way out. And God is saying every decision you need to make, you gonna make it now in Jesus name. There is an all points bulletin. There is an amber alert out for who you are. Where are you, man of God? Where are you, woman of God? God said, I'm calling you out of hiding right now. You've been hiding too long. You've been hiding your gifts. You've been hiding your talent. You've been hiding your ability because you're afraid that you can't get the job done. You too busy looking at other people's assignment. And God said, you better focus on your assignment because they can't do what you do just like you can't do what they do. God said, come on out from among them. And I'm calling you forth in the Jesus name. You better come on out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Come on. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. You better come out of hiding. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. God is saying it. God is saying it. He says, I'm the Lord God. I change not. In Romans 11, 29, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. When God calls you to do something, he's created you and wired you to do it. God ain't changing his mind. And he says, stop changing your mind. Stop one minute you're going to do it. The next minute you're not. Another minute you decide to obey. Then you change your mind then. Stop. Listen, I'm going to give you a statement. Discipline will keep you when motivation leaves you. Discipline will keep you when motivation leaves you. You need to become disciplined in your assignment. You ain't always going to feel like it. You ain't always going to feel like it. You ain't. 
I was talking, encouraging my son. I was encouraging others. I listen, I've done this as athletes. I tell people this all the time. Listen, we ain't all, we don't always feel like doing everything. I don't always feel like preaching. I don't always feel like doing what's right because it's right and doing it right. I don't always feel like those things, but we have to overcome our emotions. Emotions are feelings caused by pain or pleasure that lead you into a direction. God gave us emotions not to be led by them, but to now utilize them in what we do. But now watch this. You need to step out. And somebody out there, you keep moving with your emotions. When you feel motivated to do things, that's when you do it. You got to get past the feelings to motivate you and renew your mind and change how you think and says, wait a minute, body. You going to line up with me this day. So get up. Get up and exercise. Get up and study. Get up and read. Finish that thing. And you're going to finish strong. I declare it in your life. I'm, I'm listen, I'm determined. I ain't let nobody around me sulk around me. Because I ain't going to do it myself. If you see me sulking, you better speak some, some life into me. That means I ain't in my right mind at that time. That's what happens when Satan comes and intoxicates you with thoughts of defeat, failure, and despair. You are now, this is why the Bible says be sober because you're intoxicated with negative thoughts that's trying to lead you away from the will of God versus now your faith and your resolve needs to be solid to now move you into the will of God. And your consistent habitual actions will now cause you to come right into your place of prominence, right into your place of honor, right into your place of destiny. God is saying, this is a time you need to lock in. And for these next 30 to 90 days, you need to lock in like you have never locked in before. You need to start accomplishing some things. You need to be task oriented. And you saying, I'm going to fulfill this thing. Come hella hot water. I'm going to do what God called me to do. And I ain't going to keep second guessing what God told me to do. I already know what he told me to do. It's just my feelings trying to talk me out of what he told me to do. So it's time for you to get up. Get up. Stop being so emotional and get up and lock in like you've never locked in before. God already built you for this. He already created you for this. And you will get it done in Jesus name. That's it. I want you to type it one more again. I'm built for this. I'm built for this. I'm built for this. Can't nobody stop me. I'm built for this. Can't nobody get in my way. I'm built for this. I'm locking into my purpose. I'm locking into my destiny. I'm built for this. Glory to God. Yeah, I'm built for this. Whenever it pop up, yeah, it's Satan, I'm built for this. Glory to God. I have authority over you. No, I'm not no weak back Christian. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm strong in his ability in me. Sin has no dominion over me. I dominate it. Glory to God. That's who I am. I'm wired like my heavenly father. He made me in his image and in his likeness. He put his spirit in me. He put his laws in my heart and put his anointing upon my life. I'm already graced for what I'm doing. I'm built for this. Everything my hand touches prospers. It prospers. I'm built for this. Listen, when I speak life, it got to come to pass. I'm built for this. Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. You go over to God. Ooh, you built for this, baby. You built for this. From the foundations of the world, you were built for this. This is it. It's time to break out. This is your breakout year. This is your breakout. This, this, this now. 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 Oh, uh, God said, you know what? He said, I'm coming strong with you now. The Bible says this judgment begins in the house of God, but it doesn't end here. And what God is doing is he is hitting you between the eyes. I'm, yeah, you better hear me and hear me well. The spirit of the Lord is visiting your house. And he is coming to disrupt. For some of you this past year, you settle. You start settling down with some things. Uh-uh, God going to shake some stuff up. You ever seen a, a, a drink that you buy and if you don't, like you just sitting in the refrigerator after a while, all of the ingredients settle down to the bottom. But what you got to do, all the ingredients are there. But if I was to say, I do it with like um, salad dressing sometimes, I got to shake it up and pour it down. But if I pour it down without shaking, pour it on the salad without shaking it up, it doesn't taste the same. Why? Because all of the stuff is settled at the bottom of the bottle. And in order for it to have the flavor that it needs, it needs to be stirred up. It needs to be shaken up. 
And God is saying, you've allowed some gifts, talents, and abilities to settle in and to settle down. And God saying, I'm shaking you. Ooh, everything that hits you ain't the devil. Some stuff God may allow you to go through to shake up and to wake up the giant that's in you. Because some of you won't wake up until you got to fight. And, and that's the sad part. God is getting you into a level of consistency where things don't always have to go wrong before you stand strong. Man, that's good. Because he wants you to be consistent, that you need to be on the offensive and you need to consistently move forward in this thing. You were built for this. You were built for this. I speak to the land. I speak to people. I speak to countries and nations. I speak and I command the body of Christ to rise up strong in the earth. You were built for this. There's a call of God that's going out to the nations, that's waking up people. You were built for this. Don't you die in your desert season. You will not die. I'm declaring it for you. If you ain't declared it yet, you need to start declaring it, though. I command you to come out of that wilderness. I command you to come out of depression from loved ones that you've lost. I command that depression to leave you. I command God got somebody else for you. But listen, if you so wallowing in your shame, in your depression, you'll never see what's right in front of you. God is saying, I've already put people in position and in place. I'm the master air traffic controlman. I tell one when to land and one when to take off. He says, I know what's going on. And I'm trying to position you and to put you in a place where you will meet destiny. And destinies are colliding now. And you will begin to see new partnerships. There will be begin to be new relationships to get you to your place. God is placing your team around you to assist you and to escort you into your new season. There is a time now that God is saying the heavens are already open. My favor has already been, believe, been released and it is your time to move and it is your time to shine. So now you need to go forth in it in Jesus name. You were built for this. God is saying this now, and he's always been saying it. My hand is coming upon you to move you and to accelerate you and to strengthen you to handle processes and to handle, watch this, because some of you got to go ahead. Some of you need to get that degree. Some of you need to go to some new training to start refreshing some things in you. And God is saying, I need you to uncover that thing again. Open up that notebook where you wrote down your dreams, goals, and desires and begin to dream again and begin to live again. And God is saying this, I'm waking it up. The womb, yeah, your spiritual womb where those dreams, that baby has been stillborn for too long. And God is saying this, it's time for it to come forth. It's time for the thing that I placed in your belly to come forth. It's time for the thing that I created you to do to come forth. And this time around, I rebuke stagnation in the name of Jesus. And I command a free flowing of the spirit of God and that God will begin to prompt Move, guide, and direct you into your wealthy place, your new season, your healed place, your peaceful place. And this time around, you will get it done. In Jesus' name, you were built for this. You were built for this. You were built for this. Stop wallowing. No more. You were built for this. You were built for this. This is your new season. You were built for this. God wired you. He made you the way that he made you. He made you the ability to see. There's going to be a greater, a greater, the spirit of seeing and knowing like you've never seen before. There's going to be a spiritual awakening where the discerning, my prayer was the other day that the discerning of spirits will begin to take place. Where you will begin to see into the spirit realm to see the root causes of some things. As the spirit wills, your eyes will be open to see how things have come to where they've come to. Where is the thing? Because some of you just been racking your brain trying to figure it out. But God's wisdom, his enlightenment is shining upon you right now where your eyes will be open to see, your ears will be open to hear, and you'll begin to decree the right thing, that your speech is coming to alignment with your proper destiny, that you will begin to declare things properly and you will begin to see things manifest in your life at an accelerated rate. In Jesus' name, I want you one more time to type it in. I was built for this. You built for this.
You built for this. You built for this. You built for this. Yeah, you were built to raise up um, uh, boys in this generation. You were built to raise girls. You were built to train people. You were built to do what you do. And I'm telling you, it's time. It's time. It's time to just accept the call and move in it, baby. You were built for this. Glory to God. Listen, that's what God got for me for you today. To simply say, you were built for this. So stop wondering, is this God's will? Should I have done this? You were built for this. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We bless you. For each and every person under the sound of my voice, I declare and decree that they will walk in the fullness of God, your fullness with clarity and with distinction, and that everything that they need to be revealed will be revealed to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now here, if this is your, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord, that's one of the first things to understand, that you were created for purpose. You were created for God's glory. And that in order for you to accomplish the will of God for your life, you need God's presence and his power, his ability, his nature abiding on the inside of you. If you've never given your life to Jesus, the Bible declares that you are now disconnected from God, spiritually dead, but you can become spiritually alive or what we call born again, where God's now nature, he creates in you a brand new spirit and he'll put his spirit within you. And now all you got to do is accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And if that's you and you want to receive him, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord, and I make you Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you did that, you're born again. You're a part of the family of God. But now I encourage you to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Listen, I recommend this one to you. Listen, we're in our virtual setting right now. We will be coming together shortly. But I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, you need to connect with pastors that will help to guide, to cover, to lead, direct, to instruct, and to bring the Word of God to you in a way that it helps you to grow, to develop who you are in Christ and to now cause you and to push you into your destiny to where you need to be in life. We love you so much and we appreciate you for showing up here today. But listen, if that's you, we want you to connect with us. Send us your information. Let us know who you are so that we can connect with you. We'll have somebody to reach out to you. There may be some information coming up on your screen. You can also share with us. You can DM us, let us know, hey, I want to connect with this ministry. Hey, I want to know what does it take to become a part of this work. I need a place to submit to. We're located here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. But wherever you are, we have our virtual um, e, our e church, what we like to call it, that we're now, listen, I don't care where you are. We got people in other states that are members of this ministry. I'm telling you, you can connect if you desire to with us. And we promise to pray over you, to love you, to minister the word of God to you effectively, and to be that catalyst to help push you into your destiny and purpose. So if that's you and you want to connect with us, do so at this time. Also, at this moment, we want to honor God in our giving, that this is a time we like to call opportunity for prosperity, where now we now honor and worship God with our financial gifts. Because when we come into his house, I know we're doing it in a virtual setting. There is no distance in the spirit. As we honor God with our tithes, offerings, and gifts of love, Jesus as our high priest, the Bible says in Hebrews, he received those tithes and offerings, and he releases and administers the blessing upon our lives, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, and we connect and manifest those things. And so God wants us to do this. As we honor him, he honors us. So as you give, you can expect to receive. The Bible says give, and it shall be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He says, whatever measure you meet, it'll be measured to you again. So if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. But then he wants us to do this. He wants you to give cheerfully. Not out of obligation or compulsion, but to understand that when I sow this seed, I can expect a harvest and a return. Our prayer is for you to experience the hundredfold return. The Bible talks about 30, 60, and 100. We're praying for the optimum yield for you. We believe that we're good ground and great ground to sow into. 
And we thank God for your continued support. And we love you so much. Um, I'm just telling you, just simple things, man. We're able to be a blessing to people. Just last night, we were able to be a blessing to someone. And it was through your financial support that we were able to bless just a complete stranger. And they just, they were believe, you know, they just finished moving and they needed some things. And my wife said, I feel like we're supposed to buy their groceries and, and do something for them. I said, all right, let's do it. And, but that was through your continued support that we were able to do that. And she was so grateful and so thankful. It was like, I needed that because I just spent this money and da, 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 da. And listen, we got to be sensitive, folks. And I was just telling, I said, I was just thinking, man, I want to give more. I want us to, just the spirit of generosity for us to be a blessing to people. And so we want, listen, through your continued support, we're able to have our broadcast and we want to take it to another level. And so we, we're thanking God, we're believing God for our new facilities, new office spaces, and also with that's going to come new equipment that's needed, expansion of territory to get this job done. Because our role, and God told me this years ago, go teach my people who they are. And so through whatever media, medium that's, that's provided, we want to do that. And so we thank you for your continued support. We love you guys and appreciate you so much. The information is on your screen. However you decide to give, it is tax deductible. We are 501c3 organization. And so you can write it all. <laughs> At the end of the year, we send you your information uh, for your tax deductible receipts. And so as you make sure that you um, put in all the proper information so that we can acknowledge you and acknowledge your giving. So we love and appreciate you for that. So I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that all things are working together well. I speak over the seeds that you're sowing and I command hundredfold return. I declare that you're out of debt. All needs are met. You have plenty more to put in store in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Well, folks, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. And I, once again, you were built for this. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. It's time for you to begin to walk with your head high, shoulder square, and know this, that God created you with purpose and destiny, and it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. So, hey, on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, I'm Pastor Mike May. For those that are maybe just logging in, we love you guys. We here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. And I declare and decree that the peace of God, the wholeness of God, the favor of God, the wealth and the abundance of God, the healing power of God manifest in your life at an unprecedented rate. In Jesus' name. Well, love you guys. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. Peace.